got one of these. And I've got one of these. I've also got one of these. And it goes without saying, I've, I've got one of these. Let's check out the brand new Tudor Pelagos 39. Tudor has just increased their Pelagos line. Last year, towards the end of last year, they launched the FXD Pelagos, and now we have the Pelagos 39, the smaller little brother to the full-size Pelagos, the 42 mm Pelagos. I did a video a couple of days ago when this was announced, uh, asking for your questions. I wanna know what you wanted to know about this watch, which I thought was a good idea. It was because you guys came up with some brilliant, useful questions, but it meant that this video has turned into something much larger than I expected. And I've got the watches that you wanted me to compare. I've got the tools that you wanted me to use. This is probably gonna be the most in-depth review I've done yet. Tudor launched the Pelagos line back in 2012. So this is the 10 year anniversary of the Tudor Pelagos. The Black Bay range that Tudor has is without doubt the more popular family of watches than the Pelagos, but I do see the Pelagos line as being the flagship line of Tudor. The Black Bay range is a good looking watch. It's a very capable watch, but I do feel like the Black Bay range prioritizes looks over function, where I feel like the Pelagos line is a complete opposite. It prioritizes function over looks, and from that, it inherently has its more tactical, more tool-like vibe about it, as opposed to the vintage vibe that the Black Bay range has. Now this Pelagos 39, I feel sits in between both of those two camps of being design over function or function over design. I feel like the, if a Black Bay 58 had a love child with the Pelagos 42, I think this is what would come out. Now I'm sure you've seen the specifications online of this watch already, uh, but I've actually done my own. I've, I've ignored the press pack uh, specifications and I've done my own measurements and they do actually come out different from what is advertised. The biggest one is that this isn't a 39 millimeter watch. This is without doubt a 40 millimeter watch. I've gone through the Pelagos 39 with all the requests that you have around the measurements. and I've done exactly the same for the Pelagos 42 and the Black Bay 58. I, I don't know a, a better way to display this information. So here is just a very simple table showing you the difference in measurements. So the Pelagos 39, the case itself is 39 millimeters, but the bezel overhangs and the bezel measures at 40 millimeters. And the thickness is 12 millimeters. Now, something that is interesting to note is that this is actually shorter by one millimeter lug to lug than the Black Bay 58. So although it's a technically wider watch because you've got a 39 millimeter bezel on the Black Bay 58 and you've got a 40 millimeter bezel on the Pelagos 39, it actually sits slightly shorter on the wrist. The Pelagos 39 also has slightly wider lugs at 21 millimeters, which is really annoying. It limits the access to different straps that you have, different strap options. More importantly, it's gonna ruin the flow for the plug that I have for my NATO straps, because um, I, I currently don't have 21 millimeter NATO straps yet. The feel of the watch on the wrist and the overall dimensions feels very similar to the five digit Rolex Submariners. On paper, there isn't a massive difference in measurements between this and the full fat Pelagos, the Pelagos 42, but actually in real life, the Pelagos 42 is just an out and out beast. It's a chunky beast in all dimensions. And it's, it's nicely done. I love the Pelagos 42. It, it's, uh, I wanna say a gorgeous watch. It, it's, it's not good, it's beastly. It's just cool. This is just a slimmed down version of that. Perhaps a more wearable, more versatile version of the 42 millimeter Pelagos. A lot of people ask about the weight of this watch because it is titanium. So I weighed all three watches, but do bear in mind that the 58 is my personal 58 and the bracelet has been sized to me. So it has much fewer lengths than it normally would. The Pelagos 39 weighed in at 111 grams. The Black Bay 58 weighed in at 133 grams and the Pelagos 42 weighed in at 147 grams. Now sides down, perhaps removing about four links from the Pelagos, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the same weight as the Black Bay 58 or perhaps even a touch lighter. The bezel on the Pelagos 39 is pretty much the same as all other bezels. They all sound exactly the same. They feel exactly the same. The Pelagos 39 has a unidirectional dive bezel. It is fully loomed and it is made of ceramic. The finish on the bezel, it has this burst finish. So if you imagine the burst starting at the middle of the dial, it kind of bursts outwards onto the bezel, which gives it this, uh, uh, I'm gonna describe it in a very silly way, but it kind of has this matte sheen to it. The overall feel is matte, it looks matte, but it, there are elements where the light is reflected and it has a little shine to it. In sunlight, the bezel actually looks like it's gray. It kind of has this ghosted sense about it, which I think is really cool because that nicely matches the little vintage nod of the red text on the dial. 
The dial has been advertised within the PR information as being a burst dial. That kind of put me off. It, it was the one sticking point that I had about the watch of whether I'd like it or not was how obvious is the burst. The burst is so subtle that I actually messaged the PR team from Tudor to say, have you sent me the wrong watch? Because I can't see the burst on this watch. I think General Press has highlighted the burst because it's mentioned and it is highlighted in the PR shots. But actually in real life, the burst is really very subtle and you would only see it if there's harsh light around, which I think is great because that's, that's what I prefer. That's just my personal opinion, of course. It's, uh, I'm just showing this so you can make your own personal opinion, but I'm just, that's just what I thought. There are two elements of this dial that really stand out as being super cool. Uh, they're kind of linked together. I love high contrast dials, which is why I love my Explorer 2 so much, because it has the, the matte white dial with the matte black hour markers. This is just the complete opposite. You have this black dial with the pure white hour markers. Now the cool thing about these hour markers is that it's just solid luminescent material. From a design point of the dial, there is a difference between the Pelagos 42 and the Pelagos 39. The dial feels like it has quite a considered dial change. So on the Pelagos 42, there's a very long sloping step to go into the middle of the dial. And I feel like this nicely breaks up the size of the dial because it is a big watch. Now, Tudor has done the opposite on the Pelagos 39. There is a slight step, a slight rehort, and allows the dial to be larger than perhaps it would be if it was just a downsized version of the Pelagos 42. It's a little thing, but it makes the watch appear larger. The case is, the case, the bracelet, the bezel, uh, the clasp, it's all grade two titanium. There are a lot of people commenting saying that it should be grade five titanium. I didn't actually know the difference, so I did some research and I learned that grade five titanium is actually an alloy. Grade two titanium is pure titanium. Grade five is stronger than grade two. Grade two titanium is easier to scratch than grade five, but then grade five titanium is a lighter, visually lighter metal. Grade five titanium is harder to work with and no doubt that would make the watch more expensive if it was grade five titanium. Now I understand the difference between grade two and grade five. I prefer the look of grade two titanium. I love the deep dark gray. The whole case, the whole bracelet, everything about this watch is brushed, heavily brushed. So I'm not sure how easily the scratches will show up on this. It's one of the things that only time will tell. The Pelagos 39 only has only. The Pelagos 39 has 200 meters of water resistance compared to the 500 meters water resistance on the Pelagos 42. The 200 meters is in line with the FXD. It's plenty for someone who is a non-commercial diver. The Pelagos 39 also doesn't have a helium escape valve on the non-crown side, um, which you just don't need if you're only going down 200 meters and it's unlikely you're going to be going down that far anyway. So it, it, it is what it is. It doesn't matter. The movement inside is the same movement that Tudor has been releasing in all of its recent non-date watches. It's Tudor's Kinesi manufacturer, Caliber MT5400. They say it's COSC certified, but it's actually better than COSC certified. It performs to a higher rate than COSC. This performs at minus two. It's accurate from minus two to plus four seconds a day. It's anti-magnetic thanks to its silicon hairspring. It has a full balance bridge. It beats at 28,800 vibrations an hour, has 27 joules, and it has 70 hours of power reserve. The price of this is 3,500 pounds, which is just brilliant. It's, it's Tudor. The, the, the prices are always aggressive. Um, it's just trying to get hold of them. There's wait lists. Pricks are, are, are flipping these already on, on eBay. Don't do that. Let, let someone actually buy this because it's this is a watch to wear. This is a watch to enjoy. This is a watch to beat up and, and have fun with. One of my biggest gripes about Tudor has, has been around their bracelets. I, I, I can't stand the faux rivets that they've been using. The, the Pelagos line doesn't have the faux rivets, but this is a continuation of the little adjustments that Tudor has been doing around their bracelets. And this bracelet is absolutely brilliant. It's, it looks great. It's incredibly comfortable. All the, the, the segments move without a squeak. They move nice and freely. And then the clasp is just absolutely gorgeous. I think this is one of the six. It's a touch long. I would have preferred it to be perhaps a, a centimeter shorter, but that's just, that's, that's just me. Uh, if, when I show you what's inside, it's, it's really quite impressive, but it is a gorgeous clasp, especially with that little shield. Inside, we have two stages of extension. We have an on the fly brace extension, so you can just pull it up and just slide it across 
And then we also have a wetsuit extension by pushing this little section. Really, really very good clasp. The watch has come with a rubber strap, which is actually a very nice rubber strap with a very cool buckle. The cooler part, which I will never use, and I think very few people will, but it's a cool thing that it gets included, is this wetsuit extension part. You just feed it through and it locks into place. It then has this stretchy part. It's, it's a very simple but very cool idea. I, I really do like that. One comment that people were making about the watch is that it's a relatively boring looking watch. There's, there's nothing fancy going on with the dial. There's nothing fancy going on with the design. There's not much color on the watch. And when you compare it to the Black Bay 58, that really does stand out. And the Black Bay 58 does really appear to be a very pretty watch with the little touches of gold, with the more vintage inspired crystal. The Black Bay 58 is a very, very good looking watch. But the benefit of having a plain watch, a watch with less styling, added to it is that you get to add your own style to the watch by adding a NATO strap. These are two new versions of straps that we've done before, but these are new versions of the straps. We have a new, I don't know how to describe them without copyright infringement. You probably know what these straps are. You can get these straps along with other accessories over at barkandjack.shop. Something's got to pay for the hotel room and the travel down to London. I don't take money from brands. Talk about brands. The marketing around this watch has been interesting. When I say interesting, uh, I haven't liked the marketing around this watch. No, it is interesting because it's confusing. It's confusing because Tudor likes to push their tool watches as actually being tool watches. I've upset the marketing team at Tudor by saying that people don't use their watches for what they're intended to. But then this is a dive watch that all the press shots have been people in linen suits sitting by the side of a swimming pool. This has got 200 meters of water resistance. This has got a wetsuit extension within the bracelet. So, so why is it not strapped to a diver? At least a scuba diver? Or maybe just someone in the sea as opposed to a linen suit? I feel like this has been marketed as a fashion watch. I'd, I'd be less concerned if it was the Black Bay 58 because this is a good looking watch. This doesn't have any form of bracelet extension. Certainly not a wetsuit extension. It doesn't even have crown guards. Whereas this is titanium, a ceramic bezel, a huge amount of loom, awesome loom. Everything about this watch screams tool, screams adventure, screams I can actually do something. Yet all the marketing was I'm posing next to something luxurious. It, it, it didn't make any sense to me. If you were to have one watch, then this would be it. The Pelagos 39 is by far the most versatile of the three. I reckon the vintage styling trend will disappear and I actually think it's fading now. I do think the Black Bay 58 will date. The full fat Pelagos, the 42 millimeter version, it, it isn't a particularly versatile watch. It's not designed to be a versatile watch. It's, it's a purposeful watch and that inherently makes it not versatile. Whereas the 39 millimeter, I think the 39 millimeter Pelagos is the best of these three. It's just a shame they did those 21 millimeter lugs. What do you think of these three watches? What do you think of this new offering? What do you think of the idea of reducing the size of the Pelagos? Drop a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you like the style of this video, then hit the subscribe button down there and that little bell icon to get notifications when I drop a new video. If you want to check out our podcast, it's about effing time on all platforms. If you want to check out our watch straps and watch accessories, jump over to barkandjack.com. And if you're on Instagram, give me a follow at barkandjack. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.